Oh no, 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 oh God. I don't believe, I just picked this up. I'm so, so it's And never... already I've seen it, this is the boxer spider. That is so cool to see one. That's like, these are new. Isn't it? I, I wasn't sure because I was going to yeah. get one of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you went for the carbon ceramics. I got the carbon ceramics and, and the, I got the carbon buckets. This is the race this car This is full spec. race car I know. Spec, if right? I had got this, my wife would have killed me. No, no, that's, that's, fair. that's why fair. I did this. Because she doesn't, she doesn't know that this that's is still clever. a button down car. You know? Absolutely, absolutely. <sighs> anyway, obviously, we're going to need to talk about this, so I'm going to need your information. <sighs> yeah, fair enough. Because there is a track day this Sunday that you should come to. Oh, yeah, I'm there. I am there. 100%. Let's do it. Yep. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is the Porsche Cayman GT4. And this is a Boxster Spider. If the ancients inscribed on the wall of a tomb the depiction of the perfect sports car, it would look something like this. Rear wheel drive, naturally aspirated manual transmission, perfect weight distribution, and stunning good looks. These are Porsche's smallest, tightest, most buttoned down offerings. Make no mistake, you're not looking at a normal Cayman and Boxster with hunkered down adjustable lightweight track suspension, precision steering, and sticky tires, they were bred to hit apexes. Unlike, say, a 911 Turbo, they don't concern themselves with monstrous power figures or new-gen technology. And up until now, if you wanted a new 718, you were stuck with that growly, try-hard, turbocharged four-cylinder. But because of these and the new GTS 4-liter models, you can now opt for a real, glorious, naturally aspirated flat six, situated right behind the driver. These two are fundamentally the exact same for the first time ever, except the Boxster Spider that James is in has a soft top, making it a little bit heavier. And in the specs we have today, the GT4 is in a more aggressive setup. They both produce 414 horsepower and 309 pound-feet of torque, and deliver a package that is almost perfect. And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe and hit the bell. Okay, let's start this out simply. Driving this car around every day is not a wonderful experience. It's really, really loud in here. The suspension is pretty compliant, but the whole car is harsh. And I found when I was having conversations with James on the Apple CarPlay, I could barely hear him and I was shouting the whole time. So when I got home, I was hoarse and I had a headache. And these are the carbon bucket seats. And they're really not that comfortable. Okay, no, these vehicles are not the most cushy. And they're a little bit raw and you might be a bit tired by the time you get home. And very possibly a Mustang GT or a Scat Pack Challenger could take you at a stoplight. But if that's the way you're thinking, this video is not for you. And neither are these cars. Because only one thing really matters. Okay, you can't. But underneath all of the glass and the carpet is the engine from the new 992 Carrera S, but with no turbochargers. And because of things like a strengthened crankshaft, a bigger main bearing, new top end stuff, and new injection, it can rev reliably to 8,000 RPM all day long. You can rip to the red line over and over 
on weekend track days and not worry about blowing up your high-end Porsche racing motor. Oh my god, these things are so good. In Boxster Spider and GT4 form, these cars are a weapon. I think I once said that happiness is on the other side of 7,000 RPM, and I stick by that. That engine is unbelievable. It just revs and revs and revs and revs. If I was going to complain about it at all, it would be that I want to hear more of it. I want it to fill my head like the Porsche GT3 does. And it only comes alive after 5,000 RPM. So I find myself downshifting into first gear just to hear it. response of it. Put down, there it is. Put down, there it is. This is the benchmark. This is what we talk about when we talk about how we want a car to turn in, or the steering to fill, or the shifter to fill, or the clutch to fill. It's the low center of gravity. It's all of those things. This has it. It's a car that from the ground up has been built for car enthusiasts like you and me. In the turn in, in the stiffness, Everything is perfect. There's no delay in anything. It's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. Or it's almost perfect. Unfortunately, apart from Thomas's hair, according to the people in the comments, nothing is perfect because this has some foibles. So, the GT4 and the Boxster Spider are technically incredible. They are perfectly balanced and controlled, and I'm not sure we've driven any cars that respond so well to inputs. The steering has real feedback, the brakes can remove your face, and the suspension is perfectly damped. But unless you are on a racetrack, you feel frustrated. Because even though the engine is faultless, because of the gear ratios, you barely get to experience it. The top of second gear is 137 kilometers an hour. The best way to explain it is the day we picked these cars up, I phoned Thomas and said, what do you think? And he said, oh, I don't know. I haven't really had a chance to, to, to stretch its legs yet. And I said, well, what do you mean? You've got 130 kilometer drive from where you pick up through highways and country roads. And he said, yeah, no, I just uh, haven't been able to rev it out. And this is something that a lot of people say, and you may have seen this if you see other reviews of this car, these complaints about tall gearing. And I didn't think it would bother me. I thought it was like saying that a lady has pointy elbows. I thought it just sounded like a fussy point. But it's really not. James is right. In order to really experience what this car can do, you have to rev it out, which means you only get one gear because here we go. And now I have to stop, like officially, legally. That's it. And it pains me to say it, but the PDK starts to make a lot of sense because Porsche said it's going to have a shorter second gear ratio. And they've admitted in the past that they kind of just didn't want to re-engineer the transmission. It would cost too much, so they just stuck with this incredibly long second gear. The reality is, is that you only get to use first gear, half of second gear, and then sixth gear on the highway. That's it. So why have a manual? It's like, it's like sending a one-armed man to battle with a two-handed broadsword. You know what it can do. He knows what it can do. But you just never get to see it. Even though during this review, it sounds like we're shifting into third. Using special editing, we're actually going from first to second, back to first. do modify the transmission, but it's like $20,000 and it's a full transmission rebuild. So at that point, buy a GT3. Although, 
the rest of the car pretty much makes up for it because you can constantly get the sense of the car's capabilities. It's on cup twos, the grip is unbelievable. And the Cayman chassis, the mid-engine chassis, is probably the best sports car ever made. I've driven a normal Cayman on a track before, and nothing I have ever driven comes anywhere close to it. But it's just, it's never been more apparent that this car belongs on the track. I can't fault it for that, though, because that's what it is. It's a track car. It's literally designed to be the car that is just comfortable enough to get you to the racetrack on the weekends. It accomplishes that in spades. Oh. Would you look at these? What? You, you right there? No, well, they're the bucket seats, right? They're... Ah, yes, these are the 18 ways. They're very comfortable. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's totally different. Well, these look like they're custom made for my eyes. For James? I love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. No, they're beautiful cars. Beautiful cars. And, I, you know, someone, I own a little blue roadster. Yeah. And as someone who owns that, this is ultimate Blue Roadster. This is peak James yeah. right here. No, it's beautiful. I, this, what color is this called again? This is Gentian Blue. This is the new blue. Gentian Blue. Gentian Blue. Okay, this one's silver. I don't know the actual color. It is color. silver. This is such a great shape. If you, if you search This is a Google, better looking car than that. This no! is a, Stop it. This is a better looking car than that. No! The proportions, every, the, the, the lip, with the wing, yeah, and maybe, this the like, GT opening oh, here. So if, if you search on Google, 981 Cayman wallpaper, yeah. the first picture that shows up was my wallpaper on my computer for years. So you admit So it, I love this shape. Superior. Yeah. No, I actually really like, I've always liked the Cayman shape. And the 987 Cayman, yeah. I thought, I think it's a beautiful car. No, they up, the update's way better. Well, no, 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 it's, it's the proportions. Right. It's not the dress, it's how it drapes over the body. That's... <laughs> yeah, I've told you, you need to change your wardrobe, mate. <laughs> Shut up. Okay, but there are some larger differences beyond the color. Okay. In fact, the small one, we've got an active spoiler on the Boxster Spider, yes. which comes up at speed, and then you've Fix got... this yeah, better, it's more race car. Yeah, it, is, it does, it looks better. Yeah, yeah. But obviously the biggest difference is the roof. Oh, I this, didn't notice. Yeah, this yeah. has a fascinating roof mechanism. Oh, really? And yeah, it's... It's, it's stupid. <laughs> it's really, it's really, dumb. I have not got on with it. I wanted to. Okay, so, so it's not powered, is it? It's not powered. In no. fact, there's a whole dog, dog and bone show? Dog and bone show? Dog and, that, yeah, there's a whole dog and bone show. Strange British colloquialism. We'll, we'll put a video up right now of you putting the roof mechanism up. But can you remember the sequence? Uh, no, not really. So you, <laughs> you, you press the button and it opens the boot. Yeah. And then you, you lift the roof over. Okay. And then you have to do the clasps on the side, and then you press a special button that's very hidden, and then you put those down into the, these things, and then you push the roof over, and then you close the boot, and then you, oh, you've got to put these clasps back down as well. Okay, so what, what I've taken from this so far yeah. is that you can't do this at a stoplight. No, you have to get out of the car. So today, when I was driving here, just before I got on the highway, I'd be like, it'd be nice if I could hear myself. Yeah. But I wasn't prepared to pull over. In fact, I haven't put the roof up in four days because I just can't be bothered. <laughs> you that, can't be bothered. You park it underground yeah. and yeah. That's a failure. Yeah, that is a bit of an issue. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other differences, you've got these yellow carbon ceramic brakes. And actually looking at these right now, the size difference is amazing. Like Same wheels massive. though. Massive. Yeah, and they're both on cup two tires. That's aggressive. Very aggressive setup, yes. This has the sport brakes and the comfort seats. This is spec as though it's a convertible cruiser. Does it work that way though? As like, that's a bigger question. Okay. Bigger, but okay. I want to have a look inside this because this has gone full race car. This is all race car. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's, yeah, that's difficult. I, well, I don't want to scuff the Alcantara, right? So, no. It's, it's actually very comfortable when you put it there. It is now, but 40 minutes into a journey, it's no longer comfortable because the, the, the seat back is too upright. Perfect driving position, but it's not good for long journeys. And I'm not neglected as a passenger. Uh, no. Um, like we've, we've been in the Corvette recently. Yes, it, this like, is very straight on, very German design. So I love this, by yeah, the way. Yeah. There's nothing that you don't need in here. Nothing that you don't need. Nothing that you need? No, nothing that you don't. I was right. Like That's a double negative almost. Okay, it's got everything you need. Yeah, and no more than that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love the yellow stitching, the carbon fiber accents. It's obviously quite inexpensive. These, these things are priced up real high. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, you can start adding stuff on really quickly yeah, and no, get carried away, yeah, right? There's no shopping list like the It Porsche has the Sport Chrono package. 
So does the Boxster Spider. Right, which gives you all of the extra like timing equipment and stuff like that, right? Yeah, and the clock, which is the most and important. The, of course, it's very Because if cool. you don't have it, everyone knows you don't. Everyone knows you didn't get yeah, this work. Kids make fun of you. They look, they go, oh, no, oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <You got> the <laughs> clock. By the school year, they're like, ah, it doesn't How are you liking the uh, three gauges versus the five? The yes, it, this is intelligent and well designed. It's also, I love this gray tachometer, right? The no, one that, I don't like that. You don't like the gray? It's harder to, I like it, it's hard to read in the Yours sun. Yours has the black one, right? Yeah. Can you get other colors? You can get red, I think you can get yellow. Really? You have to, you have to That's pay. That's so I think. cool, though. Of course you have to pay. Yeah. It's Porsche. <laughs> you might not, though. If it's a free option, then okay. I'm wrong. You know what? These little door handles, I have to make fun of them because it's such a try-hard attempt at reminding you that you're in a race car. I love it. Right? Like, it's, it, like they're not even easy to use. Like, you got to really... They're easy. What do you mean they're not easy? They're, easy. they're, they're not that easy to use. I, I believe I was on the phone with you this morning and your girlfriend could not figure out how to open the door. That actually happened this morning. She's dumb. <laughs> We'll cut that out. Yeah. Joe, we love you. Um, yeah, so we've got a new marker in here. I haven't got that. Uh, oh, is that an extra? Uh, I don't know. I'm sure it is. It probably is with yeah. the Alcantara. Okay. You have, what I like in here is you've got the black interior here. Oh, the inserts. Well, I the have the wheel. silver inserts. The steering wheel, though, doesn't have any buttons on it. Because it's simple. It's GT. It's, it's just GT. Also, like, there's stuff that I have to point out. There's just a button to turn off the auto blip. I yeah. don't want to go into a menu. No, how hard is that? It's so it's so easy. Why and can't you all do that? It, it's vehicles. the simplest concept. Also, ESC off and then ESC plus traction control off. Right there, right in front. That's all you need. I don't want any other stuff. And this has got the smokers package. Why, why do I need the smokers package? So it's a free option. Most people get it because okay. it makes this a clean look. Whereas if you don't have it, it's like an empty bucket thing. How have you found the infotainment? Because this is this is kind of the old tech now. Like I'll not, stop you right there. It doesn't matter. It okay. has Apple CarPlay and it's a race car. Yep. That's literally as far as I go. I don't care. What about the uh, the Bose? Oh, it's horrendous. It's horrendous? It's awful. I thought it was average. It's, but it doesn't matter because there's so much road noise. All you hear is like, you know, the, the, the squeak of the voices anyway through the stereo. So it doesn't matter. That's because you keep listening to the Alvin and the Chipmunk soundtrack. Oh, that's probably it. Oh, yeah, the box is like slightly more simple in there. The 18 ways are really comfortable. They're the not, seats, They're not yeah. as bolstered, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I haven't got the stitching in there, but simple, beautiful, comfortable. Com comfortable is a relative word, but simple, yes. Simple, beautiful, comfortable. Okay. It is not a lie to suggest that I have been excited for GT4 Boxster Spider Week since I joined Thomas on Throttle House. The GT4, and the GT3 for that matter, have been at the absolute top of my list of desirable cars since years. And I think the reason I've never been able to buy one was one, I, I, I don't have the money to buy one, and also I felt that I'd never be able to really stretch the legs of this car. I feel it would be frustrating. You know, this is gentian blue, but it might as well be blue balls blue with the gearing, or gen... Gen gen genital blue. And as a result, I decided it really needed to be a track car. And for that reason, maybe the Boxster Spider isn't the best for this setup. I think the GT4 Thomas is in is likely a better setup with the carbon ceramics and the carbon fiber bucket seats. That's the personality of this car. Now I did drive that. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> the Boxster Spider that James is in. And it feels like this, except it's a little bit softer and it doesn't make as much noise because you're not like enveloped in engine noise with the with the top. I mean, it does still make James's Miata feel like a, a marshmallow in comparison, but it needs to be said that this is the more hardened, stiffened version of these two cars. And if you're buying one of these for a track car, this is the one to get because that one is compromised, but it doesn't accomplish the, the being a full-blown track car thing as well as this does. Does that make sense? The point is, is that these cars are so close to being the perfect all-around sports car, that gearing is an issue for me. It's Porsche's fault though, because everything else they did was so perfect, it's easy to spot the one bad egg. It's like having a bowl of spaghetti and they forgot to cook one strand of pasta. It's probably delicious, but you're gonna notice it. But as James said, desirability and that is what makes you overlook its minor faults and get your wallet out. Fortunately, we have a four liter GTS now for the Boxster and the Cayman. I think that's probably where the sweet spot lies for the Boxster. Or even if you're prepared to go further back, 
the 981 Boxster S just as a money saving exercise is going to be fantastic because it's still a flat six. But all in all, what a fantastic set of cars. This is, these are the cars that are the equivalent of the supermodels on the magazines where you're like, that doesn't exist. It's Photoshop. Yes, it does. And it sounds like this.